But generally, when we are in a battle, when we are emotionally involved, when we've got some investment in what's going on, we tend to forget and we start dragging out you messages. And if you look on pages uh, 167, 168, about what you messages do, very quickly running through what, what DeVito talks about you messages doing. This time I will roll over and grab the pad. You messages give us at least the illusion that we are in control. Something that all of us like to be is in control. You messages give us the idea that we are exercising our strategy to get the other to do what we want. Superiority is the next part of a you message, just as in advice giving. Advice giving can be okay, and we had a question about that on the quiz. Advice giving can be okay, but advice giving always puts us in a superior position relative to the, uh, to the other person. And that's, oh no, that's, that's usually an okay thing, but when you are in conflict, to try and be superior means that the conflict will simply escalate. You messages give us a sense of certainty. You are doing something wrong, and I know it. Finally, you messages attack the other person's face. That is that public persona, particularly when a you message is given in a public setting. Sometimes the you message is purposely given in a public setting in order for the other to lose face. You'll find this frequently in, uh, in coaching because this will sometimes motivate some people to try and prove that they are not what the coach says they are. You will find it sometime in teaching, because teachers often have this strategy that to put a student down and to deny them face will sometimes motivate. And sometimes it will. Usually it will not. So uh, we can, as we blame others and use you messages, we have a tendency to, uh, to uh, try to keep control and manipulate a situation. Often, that very trial is what gets us into trouble. Katie, do you like to be in control of the situation between you and your boyfriend? Yes. Does he like to be in control of the situation between you and he? Yes. Yeah. Is that a setup for a conflict? Absolutely. Most of us like in our relationships like at least a modicum of control. We want to have the relationship going our way. And so we do tend to send you messages. And sometimes you messages are important and sometimes you messages work. Mostly you messages just don't get the job done. Philosophically, you messages give the other person lots more power than they really should have lots more power than they really should have, philosophically. What do I mean? One of the most common you messages is, you make me feel. Your roommate is up late playing the stereo. What do you usually want to say to her, Ashley? You're probably listening too, but you want to go to bed. So what? what What's your, what's your most likely thing to say? I'm turn it down. Well, what are you going to say? Turn well, you turn it down. Why? Why? I don't want to turn it down. Mm -hmm. I don't want to turn it down even a little bit. I, this is music that's meant to be loud. <laughs> put some headphones in. Would you put some headphones in? Okay. We, we have that tendency, and, and those, are, those are not bad messages but we're not explaining to anybody else why. And what happens then? You make me so mad. How many times have your parents said that to you when you wouldn't listen? Child, you are driving me to distraction. You make me so angry. 
How many times have you said that to your significant other? You are just pissing me off, Taryn. <laughs> You're smiling. You are just pissing me off. And sometimes we need to say those things. We need to get them out. But that gives them power. Because if I know how to, quote, push your button, if I know how to make you angry, what happens when you get angry? Do you think straight when you get angry? Jeremiah, do you think straight when you get angry? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Melody, when you get really pissed? No. Do you think straight? I, I seldom get angry. <laughs> you seldom get angry. What do you do with your anger? I hide it. Ah, you put it in that big bag, and then later on you grab that big bag and you hit that person with it. Has not happened yet? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Usually I go sleep it off. A lot of people will do that. They'll 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 bury the anger. They'll put the anger down. They won't ever mention the anger until that appropriate time when they can bring out the big bag of anger and slug that other person really hard, and that other person goes. What? I didn't deserve that. And you have a war going on. Okay? You make me angry is a way of giving that other person power. The way of taking that power away is to decide <coughs> I am in charge of my feelings. I am entitled to feel what I feel. Do you feel happy? Do you feel sad? Has anybody ever said to you when you're on the verge of crying or you actually are crying, oh, don't cry. Don't cry. Why shouldn't you cry? Aren't you entitled to cry? Of course you are. Oh, don't feel so bad. Don't feel that way. Don't feel so bad. You shouldn't feel so bad. Brad, anybody, your mother ever say that to you? Your dad ever say to you, guys, your dad ever say to you when you went down when you were a little guy, you went down, you scraped a knee, you got blood, you started to cry. Dad ever say to you, don't cry. No. He said, no. Suck it up. Suck it up. Oh, Rub some dirt on it. Taryn, your dad said, suck it up. Walk it off. Walk it off. You got a broken leg. Walk it off. Walk it off. It's a long ways from the heart. Walk it off. Okay? You are entitled to your feelings, whatever they are. You, they are your feelings. They belong to you. And just as if I tried to take the money out of your hand, trying to take the feelings out of your person, it's just as much thief, thievery. You are entitled to your feelings. But you're all not entitled to either give me credit or blame for your feelings. You are entitled to your feelings, but you can't give me credit or blame. Why can't you give credit to someone? Because they're your feelings. So, so here's here are four statements. I am angry. I am angry. You make me so mad. I'm happy. You complete me. That really crappy line from Jerry Maguire that gets that Renee Zellweger quote used and, and gets quoted. What's wrong with you complete me? It makes no sense. Hey, it's cheesy. Like, you're complete on your own. Exactly, <laughs> Melody. You are complete on complete. your own. Gentlemen, you do not need a wife, a significant other, a live-in, or anything else to be a complete person. You are complete exactly as you are. Now, you know, we understand that James is girlfriend, yeah, has added to his status, but <laughs> but that's social exchange theory. That's social exchange theory. But you don't need anybody to be a whole person. You are a whole person. 
And some of that wholeness, uh oh, we got chew gum or? Yeah, she's we have are you? Are you? Oh, there she goes. Look at her. Cram that in. That's a ball player for you. That's hardly any. That's hardly any. You want to take oh, yeah, okay. It's a little ball. It's a little ball. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. When I get out there Friday, I want to see. All right. You are a complete person. I am angry if I'm in a situation where I'm teaching a class and I have 80% of the class members are, are attending well, I've got their attention, and I'm losing about 20%. May I be angry about that? Uh, yeah, I could be. I could be. I could be. I could feel like I'm being disrespected. What else might I feel like? I could feel like I'm not doing my job right, and then I get defensive. What else might I feel? Hurt. I could feel hurt. Why would I want to feel hurt, though? Yeah, but why would I want to feel hurt? Because you're giving all your effort to these kids, and they're not showing. Yeah, but why would I want to do that? I mean, that's I such a negative. That's such a negative it's emotion. So I don't think it would be that they're not in the class. It's such. I mean, self pity is such a negative thing. I'm doing my job. I know I'm doing a good job. I'm seeing on test scores that as an amalgam, people are getting the concepts if we go over them in class, and if we don't go over them in class, they don't get them. If they just read the book, they don't get the concepts. And I'm seeing that on the quiz scores. So I think I'm doing my job. Okay, I'm, I've got some, and, and people who, who I know are either not in class or or don't watch the videos, or don't participate in the discussion, they aren't doing all that well. So I think I'm doing my job. It's not my job to force you to go to class. You're grown-ups. You're grown-ups. It is my job to try and motivate you to go to class, because you're grown-ups, and you do that with grown-ups. You try to convince them, but I can't force you. This is not elementary school anymore. Right? So why would I want to feel hurt? Hurt is such a a negative emotion. Why would I want to feel anger at this point? It's such a waste. It's such a waste. I have choices as to how I will feel, don't I? And so do you. If the BF cheats, if the BF cheats, what might you feel? Kate, the BF cheats, what might you feel? Pissed off. Pissed off. You might feel pissed off. The girlfriend cheats, Jeremiah. What might you feel? Uh, just off. De depressed, kind of. Depressed. You might feel depressed. Ashley, the BF cheats. What might you feel? Anger. Anger. You might be pissed off, angry, depressed. How do you decide what you're going to be? Well, it depends on the whole, like, who he cheated with, when he cheated, how long he from you. So it's a rational, it's a rational decision. You actually think about that situation. You don't just react in the, you do react in the instant. But there's a thought process going on. You can think some other ways too. Like in what way he cheated? You could think I failed him. You could think he has a personality disorder. You could think, uh, you could think I do not wish to be with him any longer. All of those are possible thoughts. You are in charge of you. That's the most important thing to, re to get out of today. You are in charge of you. No one else is in charge of you. You are in charge of you. Take a look in the textbook. I'm going to put you in dyads. Um, on page 169, it talks about recognizing conflict starters. Signals that, that show the beginning of an interpersonal conflict. And there are five of them. You're late again. You're always late. Your lateness is so inconsiderate. I can't bear another weekend of sitting home watching cartoon shows. Well, there goes another anniversary you forgot. You think I'm fat, don't you? 
You never want to do what I want. So what I'd like you to do is just get, get with a, a dyad, get with a dyad partner of the opposite sex, as far as we can do that, males and females. We have more males this morning, I think. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got nine guys, eight girls. Ten guys, eight girls. I forgot Burby. Get, well, get we together. Can, we can have a couple like that, um, couple therapy. Couple therapy, <laughs> right. We can have a right. family. What I want you to do is take one of these. Take one of these. Follow it out from the U. And then go back and start with an I. A real I statement, like, you think I'm fat, don't you? might be, I feel fat. Or, I think I look fat. Or, I, I'm not feeling good about myself. You might do that. Get with, get with somebody of the opposite sex, please. Just get up and get around. Move. You know each other well enough now that you can do this without my telling you. First, what was your what was your you statement and and what was your I statement? Who's, who's just somebody? Oh, we had to make a new one up. Oh, I wanted you. I would oh, like I to have an I statement from you. Well, yes. We did it a bunch. Okay. okay. Kate, let's oh, no, hear it. No, no, have someone else go first. Yes, yes. All right. <laughs> Ashley, Ashley Murphy, you were first. You were done first. So your you statement, which you statement you work on? <laughs> Hold up, guys. The you're late again. The you're late again. How did you turn it into an I statement? I'm always on time. I'm always on time. Okay. All right. We'll come back to that one. So Mel. Mel. What got, which one um, did you get work on? Who'd you work with? Brandon. Brandon. Okay. This is this is gonna be good. <laughs> Well, there's another anniversary that you forgot. So we said, um, I'm upset that we didn't get to celebrate our anniversary this year. I'm upset that we didn't get, okay, you named your feeling, you put the word I in front of it. That's very important. That's that's where we start. Okay? Shelby? Yeah. Who were you working with? James. All right. James, how does that end up? Um, yeah, I like spending time with the kids, but every now and then I need some time with myself. All right, okay. So we're, we're, we're naming what we want. Why can't you stand to watch another weekend of cartoons? I mean, it's the greatest, it's the greatest thing on television. Oh. Another, another Saturday morning of SpongeBob won't do anybody any harm, will it? Yeah, it, it does brain damage. It does brain damage. All right. Emily, who'd you work with? Bobby. All right. What did you and Bobby come we up did with? We that one, but we did the actual argument behind it. Okay. Tell me about the argument, guys. And, um, tell me about the argument. Said a statement that I can't stand being home with kids. What did you say? So change the channel. Change the channel. And I was like, but if you change the channel, all the kids start screaming and they freak out. They quit the talking toys. And then they start throwing them at each other. So? <laughs> okay. So what, what these guys are illustrating very nicely, by the way, very nicely, by the way, is this a content, is this really an argument about the cartoons? No. No. What's this really an argument about? Watching the kids. It's about who has to watch the kids. It's about duties. It's about responsibilities. How could they get out of this spiral of going to argue about the cartoons and Tonka toys, and, and and somebody has to say what they really want. Can you please, like, watch the kids for a while so I can do some stuff? But what is it that, that you really want, Emily? Alone time. I, I need some time to myself. Bobby, what is it you really need? I need to not have to watch. I need to not take responsibility. Now, you notice, and that's an okay thing to say, because it's honest. It's where Bobby really is. I need to not take responsibility. But as soon as you say that, even though it's honest, gentlemen, what happens inside your head? What do you, what's the other message in your head? 
I, I need to not have any responsibility for my children. Yeah, well, there's that. What do you think of yourself when you say, I need to have no responsibility for my children? What do you think of yourself? Deadbeat dad? This is not how I want to parent? I mean, this is not how your parents did it, right? But it is a feeling that we have as parents, as fathers and as mothers. It's okay to have the feeling. Listen to it. Okay, who else? Jess? Who'd you work with? Okay. All right. Which one did you use? Um, mine was I never do what I want to do. I always do what I want to do. Okay. And? She said because what she wants to do is better. <laughs> okay. I have better ideas than you. And, and that's an I statement, isn't it? I have better ideas than you. Is it truly an I statement? <laughs> no. Because what's going to happen, Jess? It's going to start a fight. Huh? It's going to start a fight. Because... If you say, I have better ideas than you, what are you going to say? Yeah, no, you don't. And then we're down. We're not just, this is not just a fight. This is the fight you had in junior high. Maybe in elementary school. Yes, I do. No, you don't. But you can resolve these things with I statements, but that's not one of them.